Hello, I'm Father Bill Lytle, Director of Christian Formation at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Welcome to our daily reflection on the Gospel lesson from the Book of Common Prayer Lectionary. Today is Monday of the second week of Easter. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Today's Gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel according to John, beginning in the 14th chapter and the first verse. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides in you, and he will be in you. Here ends the lesson. Our Gospel lesson today begins what is called the Farewell Discourse, one of Jesus' longest speeches, and it occurs in the Gospel of John from the end of the Last Supper, and then continues as the disciples and Jesus travel to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now you might ask, why then do we read it in the Easter season and not back in Holy Week? And the answer is because the Farewell Discourse is given by Jesus to the disciples not to prepare them for Good Friday but rather to prepare them for their life and their ministry beyond the resurrection and beyond the ascension, when Jesus will return to the Father and the kingdom of God will be entrusted into their hands. And so it's important for us as well, because we are the heirs of the disciples. The kingdom of God has been entrusted into our hands. Now you might notice that there are a lot of difficult sayings in today's reading and in the readings as we will go throughout the rest of the week, a lot of things that are hard to understand and hard to accept. You might think that some of the things are impossible to accept. And that was just as true for Jesus' original disciples sitting there before him as it is for us. At the beginning of today's lesson, Jesus tells them, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and you know how to get there. And Thomas says, no, actually we don't know how to get there. You need to show us how to get there. And that question might resonate with you as you read through these lessons throughout the week. Um, that you don't know how to follow Jesus. 
that you don't know how to do what he's asking you to do. I know that that resonates with me, that I always don't feel like I understand, that I grasp what I'm being called to do, where I'm being called to go, how I'm being called to serve, how I'm being called to trust and believe. And that's why Jesus' answer to Thomas is so important. You do know the way, Thomas, he says. Because I am the way and the truth and the life. And that is something that is easy for us to forget. The Christian journey, the Christian faith, is not really about believing a certain set of precepts. And it's not really about following a certain set of rules. At the heart of it, it's about a relationship with a person, with Jesus Christ. We don't know the way, and we can't find the way ourselves. But Jesus is the way. All we have to do is to trust and submit. He is the one who shows us the Father by showing us himself. He is the one who sends us the Spirit so that we will be able to do the things he has called us to do. That we will be able to show our love for him by obeying his commandments. That we will be able to follow where he is going. Jesus and Jesus alone is the way. We know the way to the Father when we know Christ. Thank you.